from the uh, violent study report uh, findings that we are sharing with us yesterday, it emerged that the level of trust between the citizens and the police is very low. And uh, we had one uh, of our participants who made an open observation that whereas uh, religious institutions or actors we are said to be the most trusted institution, he also indicated that that level of trust is diminishing. And he gave us statistics about that. So we also sought to rebuild community trust so that one, communities can be able to trust one another, and most of those communities can be able to trust the police officers and other stakeholders. And therefore also, uh, also one thing, we, we, we also sought to uh, focus on building better relationships between state institutions, especially uh, the police and the communities they serve. And to build those relationships, we said, there's no better way of building those relationships other than having dialogue, other than having dialogue. And so we have held four uh, world dialogue forums. And uh, I want to appreciate the partners who have supported us so far, because in those dialogue forums, through the office of the OCPD, in every of those dialogue forums, we have had the presence of the OCS area, um, uh, Officer, OCS, and officer commanding station. We have had the area command uh, or the OCS. We have had the chiefs. Uh, some of the, uh, of the chiefs are here with us. Today. We have also had the uh, uh, private sector, the civil society, and uh, also administration police officers. And we have had meaningful the uh, communities raised. We have seen, been able to see immediate results, and other results have been progressive. So through those uh, engagements, we have been able to, uh, to build better relationship between the state institutions, especially the police at the community level and the, and the communities that they serve. One thing also in this pilot project also we sought to, and again, also building those state um, better relationships, we have also held the municipality down for us, where many of us have participated. And, uh, uh, it has been also quite encouraging to see in a forum like this, seeing uh, the police, seeing the national government, county government, civil society, private sector coming together to discuss common issues affecting us. The, the last aim was to look into improvements in data collection and mechanisms. Uh, and that has has come out through, uh, we have been able to do that through the uh, violence uh, uh, prevention, prevention uh, uh, the, the, research, the, the research that we undertook. And one of the things we, we, we are keen on in the research is to understand what are the current uh, reporting frameworks. If you go to a police station, if you go to a chief, you go to the, uh, the, the general hospital, uh, the gender-based unit and all that, what is the current framework of reporting? Uh, what is the current framework of data collection? Uh, so basically, one thing which came out very strongly from the violence study report is that we need to look into how can we have a better reporting tool? How can we enhance our data collection mechanisms and the, and the tools? And the one thing also which has come out, uh, we have been able to, to, achieve, uh, to achieve that part uh, through the balance, balance study report that, that we did. Uh, so overall, the, our expected outcome was that we are going to be able to have in the central dialogue and coordination forums. That meets and discusses urban violence prevention. We come commissioner. These are officers by the virtue, officers by the virtue of the officers they are holding, they will be automatic members of the CPA. So when the CPA is put in place, they will not begin uh, from the scratches. They will not begin uh, reinventing the wheel. They will say there is something we have been working on. 
and we build on what we have been working on. And I think that is that is uh, that is something important. And then also challenges that are facing us. And I believe from the dialogue for our meetings that we have had, from the beginning we are discussing among us issues, cross country emerging. We'll also be able to begin zeroing down on uh, actionable thematic areas that we can be able to do something about. So that again we don't just come into these forums and just discuss issues <coughs> and I uh, assume that uh, uh, somehow someone somewhere will do what we are proposing. But I believe from these dialogue forums and even from today's meeting we'll have a session in the afternoon, issues that we can be able to run with, that we can be able to do uh, some interventions around. And those we are not able to, to do interventions around, then we can be able to ask ourselves who we task with us. So basically, um, that in a summary, in, in summary is what, and the discussions that we are going to have in the coming weeks and months, one thing, one thing uh, we will be looking into and we need to begin building unto is the process of developing a urban violence prevention policy. So having other discussion, we, are, we will be able to the issues that we, are, we want to raise, we want to ask ourselves, how are they building the, towards the development of an, an urban violence prevention policy in Apollo County? Because we have said, today we know security is a national act through a, a, a legal legislative framework at the county level. Why? Because I believe, and we, I, I, it is in the interest of the county government if we have a peaceful and secure county. Because that would mean the investors, local investors already, who are investing, the investments will be secure. And they will be able to expand their investments. And as they expand their investments, they will be able to employ many people. So we are going to address issues of uh, unemployment, issues of insecurity, so that I may lose my investment. So from that point of view, we believe that the county government will be able to begin to ask itself how we we'll complement the function of the national government. I remember we were in a meeting with the Omondi with, with Mutai government in, in discussing all these issues. Uh, the, the collaboration between the national government and the county government, the Mutai government, who was one of the one of the uh, authoritatively informed us that the constitution is very clear that if a labor function is not fully devolved, there can be collaboration between the national government and the county government. And so I want so basically what we are what we are working on from today and the weeks ahead and the months ahead should be able to build. Thank you very much, Walter. Good morning, everybody. Fresh? Did you have your coffee? Uh, we're going to have an interesting day today. Something that we have been looking very much forward to. Uh, we've enjoyed uh, seeing uh, some of the field sites where studies has taken place. We have also enjoyed uh, participating, observing uh, award forum and uh, municipality forum. And yesterday, the launch, the study, uh, and this is basically why we were here. We came from Denmark uh, to visit uh, Nakuru and see how the activities were progressing towards the established goals of the, the pilot phase. Uh, we wanted to see if, if what we had on the drawing, because it is a huge achievement. But uh, in development, cooperation, as in research, we are always taking small steps and we become wiser, we become more knowledgeable in this process. And what we have seen is that the, the process of getting to a good policy uh, needs to be grounded. Also we have seen that the CPA, the County Policing Authority, is not the goal of the process. It's a means towards the goal of the process. So we shouldn't sit back and say the minute that the CPA, and not just the five people, or 10 or 15, sitting in the CPA for the luck. <laughs> because it could be that we replicate 
some old stories in Kenya where certain committees don't work. So we have to make sure, how do we make it workable? How do we make it actionable? That's a huge challenge. For this reason, uh, we came exactly here to take stock. Is the process that we have designed on the drawing board, on paper, actionable? Is it, is it actually doable in this very short time? We had a great meeting yesterday evening, evaluating, pre-evaluating a little bit what we had seen so far together with uh, Mr. Mundi and, and Walter. And uh, we agreed all that we need more depth in the dialogue forums, we need more organization inside the dialogue forum. We don't need to focus on a few of the things like values, leadership, conflict resolution, need to deepen uh, training on uh, the 101, on civic, civic education, and we need to deepen the discussion on the outcomes of, of, uh, of the study. Why? If we want to make sure that you, as the real constituencies of Nakuru, are able to give good input to a policy, it really needs to come from the people and it really needs to be well thought through. Otherwise, you will not be seen as serious actors. So what we proposed yesterday, and uh, Omundi thought it was a good idea, is he said we extend the pilot phase with another half year uh, until the end of the year. <laughs> and that means the same products, the same outcomes, the same results will not have to be delivered at at, at, uh, uh, in, in May or in, or in June, but at the end of the year. It will give much more time for a deeper process. And uh, the real evaluation of the pilot process will come a bit later. We will also have a lot of other opportunities to look for partners and, and deepen the knowledge. Because we, I have to say, we have learned so much on this trip. Dignity, we come from somewhere else. We come from another world. <laughs> And, and you are uh, our teachers. And we have learned a lot from you. And you can teach so much to the people. So I would just say that uh, we have been deeply impressed about what we've seen. Uh, but we haven't heard what you really feel about what's been done so far. So today is basically a taking stock uh, session where we. Uh, from Dignity, we'll, we'll listen to what, what you find out in, in, uh, in your group works. Uh, we've discussed a few ideas what to, to, uh, what to look into. Walter has already talked a little bit about it. And uh, this way, the process will be even more participatory than before, because we give more time for more awards and more uh, municipality for us will develop and we need more time for you to, to, to think through and rethink uh, everything. So we don't get to start on the wrong foot, but, but in reality get grounded in, in context. So with these few words, I would uh, like to, to uh, wish you a very good day of work, and uh, we are here to learn from you. Thank you. We need a, a, a better club for the extension. Um, I take this opportunity to welcome the county attorney. Uh, the county attorney is the best lawyer south of Sahara, <laughs> if not of Limpopo. Uh, the best lawyer you can ever get this part of the world is the county attorney. So, Mr. John Harriga Kenya, please come and uh, talk to us. Because yesterday we missed the county government. Now you are the county government. You are also the county attorney. You can tell us the status of the CPA. You also tell us about this dream we are having about the policy and the plan. Are you ready to assist us come with this particular plan? Karim Sana, Wakil. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, as 
see you have been told. My name is Sahari Rekinia. I am an advocate of the High Court practicing in this town, currently serving as the county attorney in the legal advisor of <coughs> the government. And Mr. Mwani has introduced me in a rather fancy way. <laughs> Well, uh, it's interesting. I didn't know I'm that that good until today. <laughs> uh, first, I have to give my apologies. I was meant to be here yesterday to represent uh, the county government. Unfortunately, I was held up. I got held up in court. We had a long uh, land matter that took us almost the whole day from 10 to 5 in the evening. and. Uh, not to still we decided to adjourn to another day. Today also I was meant to start with you early in the morning. I was also not able to be here that day uh, because I was given other assignments. Uh, among them are also part of the issues you're dealing with. Uh, let me say that uh, the county government is grateful for the work being done by the neighborhood uh, human rights report. Uh, since I joined the county government, uh, I must say they have been extremely supportive in most of the policy work that we are doing as a county government. From what I have seen them do and what we have engaged in previously, they have been of uh, great help, not only to my department, but also to uh, the whole of uh, the county government. And now I can see from where they get the energy to serve. <laughs> and uh, we are very grateful as the people of this county. I have had an occasion to interact uh, with them on uh, this policy. We are yet to develop uh, the county policy authority for one or two reasons. One being that uh, we all know how our the first assignment I got was immediately I joined the county government was to look at the people who had been appointed to the county policy authority. We had actually uh, put up an advertisement. We received uh, <coughs> some applications. Apparently, we only got people. The only got three who all came from one community. And uh, when the names were taken to the county assembly for approval we had, we were forced to withdraw those names. And we agreed that uh, the board would be advertised so that we see whether we can get a representative. Representative where uh, people from across across the county. The only people we got uh, were from Makurta. And there were only three. And the county has uh, 11 sub-counties. Unfortunately, all the three were also from one sub-county, Nakuru East. So we could, not, we could not proceed with that process at, uh, at that point, and we had to withdraw. But we are expecting that before the end of the year, we will have done the recruitment and uh, the authority will be increased. We are yet uh, to develop a policy uh, over what the authority is supposed to do. And my expectation is that uh, my colleagues in Madrid will assist us in development of uh, that policy. I am tasked with the uh, <coughs> the actual drafting and development of most of these uh, policies in our county. Considering that uh, the concept of a county government devolution is uh, a fairly new uh, thing in our country. So there are certain things that uh, in the drafting of our constitution and the uh, drafting of our laws which had been overlooked. Among them was the creation of the office of the county attorney. And when the county government came in place, this office was felt, it was felt that this office was needed, it was critical. And upon assumption of office, uh, of myself, it has been a very, very, very difficult task. 
you can imagine advising on all those devolved functions, drafting all the statutes, amending the already drafted statutes, and thinking of a county policing authority. It is a huge task that uh, I humanly may not manage uh, within the remaining uh, term that I have of about now seven to eight months. So I will require all the assistance that can be found. It is a huge task of uh, laying the framework, clear framework of the county government and a workable procedure of execution for many years to come. So I expect all the support I can get from all the stakeholders, including yourselves and our friends from uh, the other side. We are actually very grateful for the support you've given uh, our colleagues in uh, Midrift, and it will go a long way. Drafting of, uh, of a policy that is expected to guide uh, the work of uh, the county policing authority is not a job that can be done within a day or two. It is a job that requires a lot of research, a lot of involvement of many people, a lot of traveling within our county, because our county is also very uh, huge and uh, highly populated, and we have, it has also to be very, very accommodating. We all understand how Nakuru can be if we draft a policy that is not consultative. It can be very volatile and it may not even be of any help. So it is very important that uh, we cooperate together and assist each other uh, to ensure that we have this policy in place because at the end of the day, it is going to benefit our county and it may be a point of reference for other counties and the national government uh, at large. We have also done a few, a few <coughs> things uh, towards reduction or prevention of uh, violence in our county. We have just, uh, the county assembly has just concluded passing the, the county inspectorate bill, uh, which is uh, already on my desk pending uh, review before it is assented to law. And among the issues it addresses is on the decorum and the change of attitude of our enforcement officers, who from your research have noticed that uh, they, you may have omitted the kind of violence they have committed on our people in the past. We are all aware of uh, how council studies have been behaving uh, lately and uh, previously. We are still in the process of trying to make them understand that we are no longer in uh, a situation that we were in where we had local authorities, now we have county governments. And we expect that a government also comes with uh, some expectations which are in the Constitution, especially on respect of human rights. So we need to not only retrain, but uh, help them change their attitude. So it is also a request that I will be passing, uh, that uh, since I'm also tasked with the, that obligation of ensuring a change of uh, attitude in the officers, uh, that Midrift thinks of a way of chipping in to assist and train and educate our officers. You will notice that uh, previously we have not had a curriculum of training for these enforcement officers. You only employ anyone out there without any uh, requirement of qualification. You give them a uniform and a uh, room and you expect them to go out there and enforce uh, county laws. Now it is, it has become necessary that we must train them. First on basic human rights, 
Number two on uh, PR relationship with people. We need also we have we have developed uh, an enforcement brochure uh, which we are about to release. How we will be enforcing these laws. The expectation of uh, devolution is that once you are caught up in a mess within the involved functions. Our main aim is not to arrest and charge you. Our main aim is to give you a chance to correct. Because the main business of the county government is to offer service. And when in the process of offering service, we expect to correct some little revenue in terms of uh, licenses and all those things. This, the kind of businesses we are doing today are not the same uh, businesses we were doing 10 years ago. Uh, development in technology has brought up uh, new areas of investments that we have not envisaged before, which we intend to control as a county government and which also we are expected to, to ready some fees. And, and one of the issues I've been stressing to our enforcement officers is that if I come to your shop or if I meet you around town, fortunately that has not been the case. Uh, our officers are still a bit undermanned. As you know, change uh, change is not easy to, to accept and accommodate. But slowly we are getting there. My hope is that uh, with all the assistance and help that uh, we can get from uh, partners like you we will be able to make this place a better uh, place uh, for everyone to live in and uh, we make our county uh, a model county and an example to other counties on how to deal with the security matters, human rights issues and uh, to ensure that we move together as a county in terms of the implementation of our constitution. Finally, I must uh, apologize. I was hoping that uh, I may be able to get the audience with the governor today, at least for you to say hi to him and uh, tell him how our friends have been supporting us. And we also discuss uh, the way forward of that policy. Unfortunately, he's unable uh, to meet us today. But if we we'll stay around, it is very important that uh, we have uh, that interaction before our friends leave. So I will, I will try and uh, see whether it will be possible. And, uh, and, uh, putting into consideration uh, the times we are in now, because we all know how our country operates at this time of, uh, of the year ahead to next year. So activities start slowly building up, and uh, the movements are little different. So we will try and make sure that at least we get a few minutes, if it is possible. If it is not possible, we still have time to interact in the course of development of this policy and uh, development of a program uh, to assist us in uh, reduction or urban, urban violence, which is uh, mostly. Because I know as much as uh, this violence is met by uh, police officers and uh, friends and colleagues and relatives, our, our council officers are also, have, I know they have a share, and a huge one for that matter making violence on uh, citizens. So we are working on it, and uh, I hope we will manage. I didn't have much to say today. I normally, at times, I have been speaking for too long. But I think yesterday I spoke too, for too long, and I, I asked so many questions. So today I will not ask a lot. I will uh, ask you to indulge me. And we finish by thanking uh, our uh, your donor partners, Dignity Danish Institute against torture, and uh, thanking uh, Mitri for the effort and uh, the idea that you have thought about our county and our people. This will go a long way in 
changing how uh, we operate as a government and how also we operate as people with a changed attitude and mindset. So thank you very much. With those few remarks, I say thank you. And thank you again and you're welcome. Enriching plenary, at least uh, um, people can ask questions. I'm sure. Then. An hour or two. Huh? Well, the plenary is coming soon, and I need you in the plenary so that at least uh, there are some questions here people can ask. Thanks a lot. Who is next? Claire. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, County Attorney. County Attorney has challenged us that the, the county municipal police officers or Ascaris are also meeting violence on our people. So I think that's a challenge to us. How do we engage them? How do we uh, train them? Uh, that's a challenge to us. I would also want uh, Deputy ECIO to uh, say hi to us. Good morning, everybody. My name is Bahati. Deputy Bishoyo Nakuru from Malaysia to join you in this forum. Uh, I'm looking forward to finally getting the policy that will be directed to uh, county uh, Ascaris so that we can better handle the citizens that we are serving in the pool. Uh, you have our support. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining us. We are most grateful. At this moment, I want to invite uh, that we had and these findings came from new people um, first we are evaluation objective and the major objective for carrying out this evaluation was to assess how far the project goals have been met that is what we want to find out but then we had subdivided or we, we came up with smaller objectives to help us achieve our our broader goal. The first one was to produce knowledge of the stakeholders' understanding of urban violence towards the end of the pilot project. The second one was to assess the impact of the training on the participants' understanding and practice in relation to transformational leadership and conflict resolution. The third one was to assess the of police citizen dialogue forums. And you should note that the dialogue forums were conducted at the municipality and at the ward level. And the last one was we wanted to know the lessons learned from the pilot project and how these lessons can uh, inform future interventions. About the evaluation, the evaluation was conducted between a period from 21st April to 10th of May and it targeted the following categories. One, we had those ones who had been trained. The people who had been trained were two categories. We had senior police officers and we also had civil society organization members. The other category was, we were looking at people who attended the ward 
dialogue forums and the municipality dialogue forums. The dates have been given. Uh, we administered the uh, questionnaire in the following ways. The, particip uh, the participants of municipality dialogue forum, we had the forum here, so we gave 25 uh, participants questionnaires and we realized that there were some police officers who had been trained in the senior police officers training who were not here, so we added them and then we also targeted people from the World Dialogue Forums because we realized that some people, okay, there is a group that usually attend World Dialogue Forums but they were not with us when we are administering the tool, the methodology that we used. We had a sample <coughs> size of 80 and we administered 80 questionnaires but then only 44 were returned. Let me not use the word only, because it, uh, it was a thing 55%, which was a good number, and we, we, we decided that one would be able to generalize. Why only 44? For the 25 who are here, it was easier, we give you the questionnaires and you return them the same, same thing. But then it was a challenge in the world because we had to follow these people up. You give a questionnaire, somebody does not return, so it explains the questionnaire return rate. How did we do this? We used stratified sampling technique whereby we divided the participants in four structures. The first structure was those ones for civil society organization. We had the police, we had administration, and for administration, we had administration both from the national government and the county government, and then we had the community who mostly we reached them through our World Dialogue Forums. After stratifying them, we used simple random sampling where we were now identifying the people. We stratified them into a group of 2020, and then after that, we just listed the names and we would use simple random sampling technique to pick. The questionnaire was both open, had both open and closed-ended questions. We did the analysis using SPSS, and then we presented them in counts, percentages, descriptive summaries, and cross tabulation. Let us look at the results. Um, on gender, there were more male than female. 54.5 were male, but 45.5 were female. This is still a good number, much as they were not like equal, but there was equal representation. On the categories, um, majority of people who were, who attended the whole of the, who, who, who participated in the project, we had civil society organization <coughs> meeting with 22.7, after that, we had police officers, 20.5. We had residents association, 13.6, and all those categories presented here. What was interesting is that at least we have reached different categories. So in our message of urban violence prevention, we are sure that the different, you cannot see. Moses, my <laughs> technical guy. It's not eye friendly. Ah, sorry. He's the IT person. Attended 
was the municipality dialogue and coordination meeting, which had 25% of uh, participants. We have validation of 101 booklet, 23.5, uh, we have the trainings for the police officers and civil society, and we have validation of violence survey report. The last one was World Dialogue and Coordination Forum. What I would want us to note is that all of these things were being like those who attended, some people who attended the uh, police and CSO's training did not attend the World Dialogue Forums. Those in the municipality dialogue forums probably never attended the trainings. That is why we see that variation because the different categories were attending different activities. Um, on violence prevention, this is our first objective. We asked, has the pilot, uh, has the pilot project enhanced knowledge uh, on violence prevention? We see a good majority of people, only one person said no, meaning 97.7 .7 are of the opinion that their knowledge on violence prevention has been enhanced out of this project. So it means that the pilot project had an impact because these people did not have prior knowledge on conflict resolution, and then they've been trained. You're giving them new knowledge which will help in urban violence prevention. Upon ranking, 10 ranked the training as very useful, and uh, the average is 8.4. Uh, we were ranking between 1 and 10, 1 being not useful, 10 being very useful, so that is a good finding. Uh, the participants were further asked, the elements of conflict resolution that they had learned and they usually incorporate in their daily work. The results are presented there. Uh, from the business community, they said that they resolved disputes within the Matatu industry. From the CSOs, there were people saying that they advert <coughs> advertised peace initiatives and forums within divisional peace committees. Uh, for the CSOs, also they use collaborative techniques rather than confrontational methods, which is a good thing. The other thing that they incorporate in their work, uh, they use insights and effectively communicate this to prevent the development of volatile situation. I hope it will be used when we are going towards elections because we really need to have early warning signs and communicate and prevent violence before it happens. On dialogue and coordination forum, 39 out of 44 had participated in these forums. And remember that these forums are held at the ward level and also at the municipality level. Almost half of the respondents were fully involved in these dialogue forums, which is a good thing. It means that the things that they've learned in these forums, they will be able to share with other citizens. Most of them, uh, this information came from you people. So what did you gain? Um, there was people gained violence, knowledge on violence, Okay, they're saying violence prevention is a collective responsibility. Thus, there is need for all key stakeholders to come and work together. Because if you look at our the objective of this uh, pilot study, we wanted to bring different actors together in order to curb urban violence. So that is a knowledge that they gained. There was another thing: communication is important. As a communication is an important strategy to handle violence.